Greetings. In this video, we're going to be making a graphic button and a text button. So I'm going to start with the graphic button. I have here in my Photoshop palette two different layers, which I would like to be the two different states of a graphic button. These two layers are in the same geographic location on my canvas. So to get them to be a button, I'm simply going to rename them. I'm going to name this top blue layer. I'm just going to name this contact us dash button. The dash button is the hint that tells SiteGrinder, I want this layer to be not just a regular graphic layer, but a clickable button, something that can be clicked, linked to other places, things like that. I'm going to take the red version, this uh, uh, polygon here, and I'm going to name it Contact Us Hover. By naming it with the same base name as the button, Contact Us, the SiteGrinder knows these two things should be the two states of each other. It also knows this because they're in the same geographic location on the canvas. The hover hint tells SiteGrinder this is the hover state for this particular button graphic. The button and the hover state are never visible at the same time. They replace each other on the final page. So now, to go ahead and take what I've got now and get it to where I can see it on the website, I'm going to open up SiteGrinder. So I'm going to come to the File Automate menu and choose SiteGrinder 3. Ask me to save. It's going to open up SiteGrinder. And when it opens, it's going to scan the Photoshop file, give me a little report here of any trouble. I'm going to just go skip past it at the moment. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to click this button here called the Build button. So I click the Build button, and now things start to happen. So you can see that Photoshop is starting to, in the background, do its little thing. The SiteGrinder is commanding it to output this graphic, output that graphic. Meanwhile, SiteGrinder is outputting this HTML and that CSS and any JavaScript or anything like that that's necessary for the page to, to come along. SiteGrinder also opens the Design Manager, which shows us the pages that we're presently building. Right now we've just got the one page. I'm going to go ahead and click it here. And um, you may have heard the little ding-dong there, and that little uh, bell was the, uh, the bell of the uh, build being finished. And so now we can see the page on the right-hand side in the right browser window here. And when the mouse comes over the button, it switches to the red state. So there I've got a mouse. I've got a button and a hover state both responding to the mouse. So we're doing real well as far as this uh, graphic button is concerned. So that's great. So now I'll just uh, go ahead and close this, close uh, Site Grinder, and we'll now um, uh, add another state to this button as well as get into a text button. Now, a button, besides having a hover state, can also have a click state. So I'm just going to make a new layer here, and I'm going to make a, a, a green uh, round corner. Uh, rectangle uh, here with the round quarter rect tool. So we'll just put it there. And I'm going to name this layer, so you can sort of see up here, I'm going to name this layer contact us dash click. Now normally uh, web buttons don't really need click states. Um, in particular buttons that are linking to other pages, that's sort of unusual. Um, on the web, most buttons just have a hover state and a click state is unusual. You would use a click state if you were using um, a click show or something else where you had some sort of thing that going on to click that's staying on the same page. But typically if you're navigating away to another page, we don't use a click state. But I'll just go ahead and put it up here for the demonstration. Now let's take a look at my, let me expand my Photoshop canvas out a little bit. I also want to make us a nice text button. So I'm just going to do that right here. I'm going to grab this uh, uh, the text tool here and, and I'm going to drag out uh, with paragraph text, I'm going to drag out a little text layer. So I'll just go ahead and uh, drag out a box of the text tool, about yay big, let's say. And I'll just type in to this text, I'll just type in uh, uh, a hello and I'll make sure that color is uh, set to black. Yeah, we'll choose a pretty simple font. You know, just choose some uh, Verdana, and uh, we should be all set to, to go. Before I uh, finish this up, I want you to pay attention to the size of this text box because this will be important when we're talking about the, the text button. Now, any layer, text layer in Photoshop, which has the little T icon on the layers palette, can be output as either text or graphic by SiteGrinder. And there's two ways of telling SiteGrinder to output as text. One of which is to control the anti-aliasing, which you can see here on the, one of the text tool options, set the anti-aliasing method. If I set the anti-alias to none, then SiteGrinder will output that text layer as styled HTML text. 
If it's sent to any of these other options, such as sharp, crisp, strong, or smooth, the text layer will be output as a graphic. Well, I want a text button, an HTML text button, so I'm going to make sure this is set to none. Alternately, I can put the text hint on this layer. And because I also want it to be a button, I'm also going to put the button hint on this layer. So now we've got hello text button. So we're telling SiteGround that this is a button. It's clickable. It can be hyperlinked, um, all sorts of things. And I also want this, this particular text layer to be output as styled HTML text, not to be output as a graphic. Thank you very much. Now, whereas graphic buttons, head, button, and click states, like we saw with these other layers that are separate layers, text buttons do not. Text buttons have their hover and click states set in the design manager. And so that's what we're going to see very next. So I'm just going to come here. I'm going to choose once again. Uh, I'm going to open up SiteGrinder, save the document. It's going to open it up, scan the document, and let us know if there's anything amiss. Doesn't seem to be. And we'll, once again, we're just going to set it to building. Now, when this builds, uh, we're going to see more controls when I activate the page on the left-hand side here. So right now, you can see the little button spinning there, and it's finished. I'm going to click that, and now here's my, uh, let's go ahead and check my graphic button. It's working great. If I click, changes to the green round corner rect. Great, that's working really well. But my text button is a little less adventurous right at the moment. It's just having a little underscore, that uh, the underline that appears on it, no big deal. But I can actually customize that quite a bit in the text button menu styles control in the design manager. So there's my button. You can see when I roll over it, the site render selects it for us. And I can now either edit the default style, which is the text button style, which at this moment is going to be applied to all text buttons that I would use on my, my from this PSD file, or I can make a new style. So I can either edit this style as it is now, or I can make a new style. And I'll just for this demonstration, go ahead and make a new style. So I'll make a new style, and I'll say uh, this is my hello uh, button style. And we can now start to cover the normal hover, visited, and click states for this particular uh, text button. So for example, um, in Photoshop, you cannot put a background color on text. But in web pages, you can. And so that's something we might want to actually do. So if I'm, for example, I'll just go ahead and turn on a blue background color. To this particular button. Now it has that blue background color. You can also turn on opacity and uh, vary the opacity if you want to do that, although since this is just on top of white, there's really no advantage to that. Um, we can change the foreground color. Right now I, it's just black text, but um, if I wanted to, even though I didn't bother to do this in Photoshop, I can make this text uh, be sort of maroon colored. Um, we can apply such effects as a uh, box shadow uh, on this uh, thing with a little bit of feathering. Uh, now we've applied a little feather, a uh, little box shadow to the uh, to the box. Let's uh, let's make it a little bigger, maybe a little more more feathering. Um, we could do the subtext shadow right on the text itself, and uh, see how that looks. Uh, a little, maybe a little less feathering on this particular one. Um, again, these these controls have opacity. Uh, we can put borders on this thing, um, including um, rounded cornered borders, and. Uh, um, so we have lots and lots of options on that we can apply um, to these different things. So now I've really started to customize my text button. And now I'm going to go over into its hover state and start to change that. For its hover state, I'll just make it simple. I'm just going to change its background color to some um, gruesome shade of green uh, when it's rolled over. And uh, so now it does that when it's rolled over. And when it's clicked, because it's free, I might as well continue to change it. So I'll change the background color once again. When it's clicked, I'll just change it to uh, some uh, red. So, and it's clicked, it goes to red. There we go. And maybe when it's clicked, I'll also change the foreground color to of the, the text itself um, to yellow. There we go. There, beautiful button. So this button that I'm clicking right now with all these little colors and borders and all that shadows and that sort of stuff, remember, is just one tiny text layer in Photoshop. And the box of this layer was, again, the size was determined by the box, the text paragraph box that we drug out in Photoshop. So that's how we do graphic buttons and text buttons using SiteGrinder. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do a combination of the two, doing what we call a layer group button, or it's often called a hybrid button, where we're making a button that's out of both graphics and text. Um, very powerful type of uh, little button. Thank you very much.